In this video, I already start with some stuff written to speed up a little the process. This image actually is was taken from Frank's, Professor Frank Stajano's uh, notes uh, on algorithms. Um, Professor Frank Stajano is from the University of Cambridge, and uh, I recently noticed that he started his own video blog, so it's probably much better than mine, uh, and it to touch the same topics we are uh, covering. I would say the only uh, probably good thing about my vlog on this subject is that I, I'm pretty much studying these things at the same time and, and I showed the difficulties I have and ex uh, when exploring these, these topics and uh, the way I organize and understand uh, th these um, these algorithms and this process. So, um, anyway, uh, what I want to talk here is a little about the notation and um, the definition of these um, of these magnitude orders. So, for example, um, we have small ho, big ho, big theta, big omega, and small omega. Uh, something uh, good to know about this is that, and let me just zoom a little. Uh, oh, okay, trying to show it a little greater. Okay. So, um, the the ones we are going to refer to more more often are these three: big O, big omega, and uh, especially useful when big tet. Um, you probably already are wondering why there is no small tet. Uh, we are going to touch on that in a minute. Um, this is the notation we are going to use uh, because I think it's the one that makes more sense, but it's not unusual to uh, put equal uh, an equal sign uh, when doing this kind of thing. Um, and this is a, a description of uh, what each of these means, and um, you also have an analogy of sign. And this is actually uh, pretty correct as it's part of the definition, to be fair. So, um, let's see the definition. Uh, if you are given two functions, f and g, and um, they are from the natural set to the real set. Um, acts, for example, a succession. Uh, the order of magnitude used to express the asymptotic complexity are defined in the following manners. And here I only have the definition of these three. And um, for for small o and small theta, you can just take uh, make this comparison strict, and uh, that's it. Um, it's just a, ma a matter of changing uh, the, the, the bound. You are setting a bound and, uh, and it's, um, it's the difference between having a lower upper bound or, and uh, that bound uh, and le letting that bound be an exact uh, bound. So it's that, that's the difference uh, between them. Uh, let's read this actually to make sure we understand the notation. Um, so, big O of the function g of n is the set, this is set by a building or a construction, set building notation, uh, is the set of functions f of n, such that, and I am using colors uh, with meaning, uh, such that there exists a c in the positive real numbers and an n0 in the positive integer numbers such that the function f of n is uh, lesser than the function g of n and please note function f of n and function g of n uh, multiplied or times a constant c for every n greater or equal, that is, uh, greater, um, than n0. Please note that when I say greater or less than uh, or smaller, I actually mean uh, uh, greater
lighter and smaller. Uh, these two, not strictly smaller nor strictly greater. It's the difference of when I say greater and when I say strictly greater. And um, to have a visualization of this, I actually have here, this, this image ca came from Professor Pedro Ribeiro of the University of Porto uh, slides. I actually think he, he took this one from Skiena and I'm pretty confident that this table uh, was heavily inspired on, uh, uh, of a, on a table that is in Skiena's book. Um, or maybe Carmen, I'm not sure. But I, I know this image uh, is... Uh, well, I don't think this image was authored by him. And uh, this table I know he, he took inspiration from Skiena. I saw it there. Um, but he actually made the presentation much cleaner. He's using scientific notation here and he put red this, this text in red and that helps. The other two are from our his work. So, um, at least as far as I know. Um, so, this, um, this is Vigo, right? And as you can see, if I zoom in, um, this, this function is c times g of n and it's a upper bound of the function f of n after a certain n zero, okay? That's what we mean in this definition. There is a constant c, this is constant c, that when multiplied with the function g of n, the function g of n, this one, um, it becomes an upper bound after a certain n zero and zero. And of course, when you use this notation, you, you, when you do this thing, um, you are expected to find the constant c and the constant n zero. And uh, if you are, and obviously, um, this, is, uh, this is why we use this notation of belongs to here. Because what we are trying to say is that the function f of n is inside this set, right? And this set is given by big O of g of n. So we are trying to say that the function f of n that describes a certain algorithm is a function in this set that is given by big O g of n, where g of n is this. So when you, when you are asked to find the the complexity, the syntactical complexity, be it time or memory, of a certain function or program f of n, f of n what, we are, are, uh, what we are actually asking you is what is the, f the constant c, the constant n0, and the function g of n that uh, defines an upper bound for f of n. And note that there are various functions that are upper bounds. Of course, an upper bound that is here is not as helpful to um, to uh, to uh, someone that is trying to understand the complexity of your algorithm. And if you give them an upper bound here, uh, that is not as helpful as if you give them an upper bound here. And more often, uh, you are asked both the upper bound and the lower bound, that is uh, big omega of n, uh, of the function f uh, of n. And uh, if you are asked both, then what you, are, uh, you, what you will probably, would you, what you would probably want to give that person that is asking both the big O and the big omega would be the big theta. And the big theta is a sandwich of upper bound. And lower bound. You by now already know what will be the definition of big theta, uh, of sorry, of big uh, omega, right? Because the only difference is that now instead of lesser, uh, you are going to do uh, greater, right? And small o would be uh, strictly lesser, and uh, uh, big omega would be strictly uh, greater. Okay, so 
Note, this is the function g and it is being uh, always, uh, as you can see here in the graph for big omega, function g is always smaller than the function f, so uh, the big omega is a lower bound, okay, just to make that clear. As for the big theta, it's basically a, a mix of this both, this uh, two, right? Uh, you are given uh, the function f of n, uh, is the, con the set of functions f of n such that there exists a constant c1, a constant c2, both are in real positive numbers, and a n0 in the uh, integer, the positive integer set, such that the um, c1 times g of n is smaller than f of n, and that f of n is smaller than c2, and these c constants are different, right, uh, most likely, and times the function g of n, uh, for every n greater or equal the, than, uh, greater than n0. Uh, so that part is constant, is always present, right? The, the size is here, and in which you pick this one and this one, you put all, all the two of them here. Um, I wrote here a note on notation because I, I actually find this quite relevant for a good understanding of this. Um, these are actual f functions, n, f of n, right? Um, f of n usually is the image at n given by the fu the function f, right? And um, but in these definitions, uh, they are also they also are comp computing time estimate. It is when we say the function f of n is in big O of g of n, we are referring to the function f and g. Uh, on the other hand, when you when we write f of n smaller than c times g of n, this already refers to the image of n in f and g. So this is an important an important note because we are sort of mixing two notations um, because uh, this is a a function, right? Um, the function f of n, this is a function f, this is a function g, but when we are here, we are talking about the time estimate of f at n and of g at n, g at n. So, just to bear that in, bear that in mind, uh, otherwise it might become a little confusing, that's why I wrote this note here regarding the notation. Um, so, with respect to the image I collected from Professor Pedro uh, in this page, um, <coughs> sorry, that, that, yeah. um, there are these graphs that I find I think are quite helpful. You also have um, the dominance relations here. If you want to minimize time, smaller functions are better. If a function dominates an error, if as n grows, it keeps getting larger. That's the the definition of dominate function dominates. If n grows, uh, if as n grows, it keeps getting larger. Mathematically, you can use this uh, symbol, and you are saying that f of n uh, dominates g of n if the limit of n towards infinite infinity uh, you have this. And these are the dominance relations. I just scratched the O here because we are using um, LG for logarithm and I actually forgot to do the same with this one. But it's it's the same thing, okay? Let me just zoom in. Uh, it. Okay. Uh, we have been reading writings uh, LG uh, for um, base 2 logarithm, so let's keep it consistent, at least here. And um, this table gives you quite a good uh, notion of, uh, for a certain a certain si input size, this is the input, input size, this column is input size, 
Um, it gives you a good notion of uh, how long it will take in, in function of the complexity you are using. And if I'm going to put uh, red dots in every um, in every um, hole in logarithm, I'm, I'm gonna I have to write a lot. Uh, yeah. So this is LG to keep it consistent and uh, LG. And uh, as I said, this is the input input says. Uh, we 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 usually write that as n, right? But I am actually going to write it as the cardinality the cardinality of n. Try not to make it confusing. It's something like that. Okay. Um, anyway, um, the other table that it's here and I think also is useful is this regarding the names we usually give to the to these functions. Uh, so if it's when we say that's constant, uh, if it's LG of n, oh, then, <laughs> why am I doing this? If it is LG of n, then we say it is um, it is logarithm logarithmic. Uh, if it is n, we say it's linear. If we say it is n times the the LG, uh, please note that writing log is not wrong. Okay, it's, it's just a convention. Uh, I prefer to have uh, LG for binary logarithm. That's just because I think it's less confusing but it's really uh, the same thing. Um, n times the logarithm of n, it's linear rhythmic, uh, n squared is quadratic, n cubic, uh, n to the cube is cubic, two to the n is exponential, exponential and n factorial is factorial. And uh, you have got some good examples here and we are, going to, we are going to see most of these in the following videos. Ah, I almost forgot, but I, I still want to mention it. Um, as uh, we said, the big theta is a tight or exact bound uh, because it's a combination of these two, right? So you have your program f of n here and you are saying that it's upper bounded by this and uh, lower bounded by this. So in the runtime it, it probably will touch both because you are, you are putting it in a sandwich and uh, so it will probably touch both at some n. Uh, so, uh, if you are saying that, then um, I recall that little o and little omega would be an would mean that the, alg the algorithmic, the algorithm runtime um, uh, is upper bounded by uh, a certain function, but it cannot be equal to that upper bound. That's the difference between this big o and this big omega, the function f of n would never be able to touch this upper bound after a certain n0, and here the same, uh, the function f of n would never touch this lower bound at any n0. And uh, you, can, you could say that the, um, the small o and the small omega are in a way uh, defined by picking the big O and subtracting the big theta for low, low, uh, small O and big omega would be again, uh, it's, uh, sorry, the low omega would be again the big omega s subtracted to the big theta. It's because you, you are saying we can touch, we can touch the lower bound in this case, and we can touch the upper bound in this case. So, if you try to do a small theta, that would be uh, the big theta subtracted to the small theta, then you are, you, would, uh, you are going to get an empty set, because you are saying that the runtime cannot touch the exact bound that we are setting for it, uh, therefore it's impossible, that's impossible to have any result, because uh, um, since it is the an exact bound that you are uh, subtracting. So the runtime is definitely going to touch these boundaries, 
because that the the exact bound of the, your program execution it's a perfect approximation so you can actually mathematically make a proof that uh, a small theta does not exist um, there are no runtimes that the algorithm could take and uh, would not intersect with an exact bound so the set of all uh, the set of all the times um, estimates uh, of all the times estimates um, belonging to a little theta would be an empty set so that's why we don't define it that's weird yeah so absolute sign and we are saying hey uh, actually this is an interesting aspect I see uh, here, uh, Cambridge notes to use uh, the notation I've been using, uh, but in the exercise they switch to this notation. I think in the notes they said I used this notation, so I don't know what happened in that uh, in that previous table. But anyway, so big of one. And now you see, um, yeah, this, and we are going to say. Um, that sine of n is this. So let's pick the big O uh, definition, and you we have to say, hey, sine absolute value of sine of n has to be uh, smaller or equal to c times one, correct? And how do we how do we um, Say that well. Sine of n is is one of the following values. It is a closed interval from zero. We are talking about the absolute value. It's a closed interval between zero and one. Correct. Well, if it is a closed interval between zero and one, then we are saying that if we have c equals to 1.1 it already is greater than any value uh, sine of n can take so that's a c and then we need to find uh, n0 well we have just said that it will always be greater than any value sine can take so n0 can be 1 and it's done that is it let's see the next one actually this is one this is two because I know exactly that uh, sine of hen oh and yeah in this video I decided to have some things prepared so I, there were no typos and uh, and it would be a fast um, uh, overview of what I wanted to touch, but you see, this part is well not prepared, so I I will try not to make any mistakes. But I did not solve this exercise before, so I may get stuck at some point. But I think that's healthy because I will eventually unstuck myself, and um, and you'll see some complications that may come show up while solving exercises. None of, the, of them looked hard to me. This one made me think, uh, but the others looked kind of usual, regular, basic algorithm stuff. So, yeah. But this one made me think because at first I thought, hey, isn't it Tetra one? But it isn't. And it makes sense that it is not. Uh, so, do not let yourself think <laughs> that, uh, that things are trivial. Sometimes they are not. Sometimes they are, but uh, not the way we thought they were. So, oh, big theta means it is in big O and in big omega. Uh, but you see, uh, it, we already know it is in big O. And it is not in big theta, therefore it is not in big omega. Let's see why. Big omega uh, definition tells us quite the same thing, but now we have to try sine of n uh, greater or equal 
to C times, times G of N, correct? Well, uh, what do we want then? Right? What do we want here? Um, well, <clears throat> uh, yeah, G of M, sorry, I wanted to write one. Well. Then one. And we know that uh, just C is, isn't going to exist, right? Because sine is going to oscillate between uh, 0 and 1 and we are not going to take zeros, we cannot say C is 0. If we said C is 0, then it would be true, right? Uh, because for every value sine takes, it, is, it would be greater or equal to, to G of N, in this case 1, times C, that would be 0. So it would be always be greater or equal uh, than uh, to 0. But we can say C is uh, 0. And therefore, we say that there is no such C, that for each uh, value after a certain n0, right? After a certain n0, whatever n0 you pick, sine will always touch uh, 0, and so you can't define a c greater than 0 for which for each uh, for which it would uh, remain true, right? That's the intuition. You can mathematically show that by doing a limit, right? You can uh, go and say, hey, um, the limit of sine of x uh, divided by 1, you know, divide this by 1, this by 1, uh, with x going to positive infinity equals to x, uh, well, It is going to be undefined, right? Uh, you can't, you can't actually. There is no such x. Uh, sorry, I, t I wrote x. Here. I wanted to write c. Um, c, k, or whatever you prefer. But uh, there is no such c. There is no such k. It is undefined. So uh, it doesn't converge to a fixed value at any point, because it is always oscillating and it will never uh, touch, uh, uh, and it will always touch zero during that oscillation, it doesn't converge. So, you can in fact, you know, it is between 1 and 0 and sin is on that, this is not sin, <laughs> this is not sin, definitely not sin, but uh, sin is going to touch 1, 0, 1, 0, you know, uh, but it will never, and I'm talking about absolute sin, it will never go over when, but you can, you can pick a C and say, hey, big O, it is there, sign doesn't touch there, it has a big O, right? But you cannot pick a C that is zero or smaller than zero, and sign is zero at some point. So, there is no omega. 1 here. It is not omega 1. Okay, so that's the reason why it is not omega 1 and it is not uh, theta, theta 1, big theta 1. So I hope that was clear. So, the next one. Um, I was just thinking about something.
example. So um, let's go to free. And what does free tell us? Free tells us that 200 plus sine of n is in big theta of 1. And now, there is a reason why um, why this exercise is here. And the, the, and the reason is the exact same reason why I didn't give you something in this video before starting doing these exercises. Um, and that reason is there are some practi uh, practical rules, uh, kind of rules of thumb that many books and many slides give you, like constants doesn't matter. But in computer science, constants do matter when we do analysis of algorithms. They are relevant, and this is an example of why they are relevant. You see, sine of n wasn't tet of 1, but it is tet of 1 when you had it to 100. And why is it to, uh, in tet of 1 why, when you had it to 100? Because um, now, sine is going to start at 200, and so it will oscillate between 200 and 201. You see, now you can find the source C for each for which uh, you have uh, the 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 omega n, uh, the omega one um, complexity. So it is now in omega one. In, theta, in big theta one. Um, all right. I don't think it is necessary to do the demonstration of this. Uh, it's quite trivial. It's the same thing. So just um, yeah, same thing. It's not that interesting. The concept is. So this is meant to be a short video. So let's move on. Uh, that was free. Now let's go to the next one. And uh, and so just a sec. Hey, I had to deal with something else. It's already uh, reaching nine p.m., which means I'm going to bed soon. But let's just do one more, right? So I see. I think I wa uh, we were in four. Oh, there is no absolute value here. That, that means it can go to negative, but it's still trivial how to solve that one. Um, none of this is really hard, but anyway. So for four to solve four, all you have to do is uh, it's o theta n, a big theta n. And you see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, n plus 6, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Well, what is this? It's a function, right? It's a function that grows at speed uh, on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and um, start growing uh, from a base value of 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So you want the constant when multiply it with n that, and the constant 2 uh, multiplied with n that is going to uh, sandwich this function here, right? Well, you have it. You, all you have to do is to apply the same functions like you would do with any equation. So um, you do. Uh, oh wait! But, but bearing in mind that uh, you only want a value, right? So how do you do that? Well, if you do um, 
C1 equals to let me think well actually let's start by solving this in equation to get a sense of the problem so you would have C1 times n minus 654 six five four three two one uh sorry call it two one two three four five six n so equal then c two times n minus six five four three two one now if you divide both uh, both sides by this constant, um, you have um, um, <coughs> C1 times N divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 minus 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 right and this smaller than n and this c2 times uh, c2 times n one two why can't i write two why can't i write anything <laughs> Divided by one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have a constant part and we have a um, multiplication division part. Now we know uh, if this was a limit. Actually, let's let's delay that a bit. Let that thought a bit. Uh, so what do we want? Do we want um, well? We need um, I'm clearly already somewhat tired. Tired. So, uh, here's the thing, let, am I actually going to write this in another color, let n0, you have to pick an n0, so otherwise you are not going to do magic here, so let n0 be equals 1, for the sake of example, and now, uh, let's say, that um, well, you have this uh, C of one over one, two, three, four, five, six minus this and um, let's say for the sake of example that this is equals to n. Well, then. Uh, why did I simply? Why did I move things around? Uh, this is the last exercise I'm doing today. I'll leave the rest for tomorrow. So, um, yeah, you move it back to where it was, and uh, you multiply it by what it was multiplying. So uh, this goes away. This goes away, and you have C1 equals two six five four three two one <sighs> did I do the math? have I done the math right? Let's, let's just show it this move there 
So you had it, you had it there. You multiply this one with this one. The third was dividing by this one, so it cuts. And um, you end with this. Yeah, C1 is equals to that. And C2 is pretty much analogous to that as well. So now you can say, hey, well, let's have C1 equals to that minus 1 and C2 equals to that, well, 5, 4, 3, 2, 2. And it should work, I would, I would guess, I think. I guess it makes sense. Um, let's just quickly share it, right? Um, so, if we open a calculator here, to see if the math makes sense. Actually, I already done some accounts here, um, but it was to check something else. I was curious to see uh, something. Um, so, let's try... Uh, try what? Ah. 42 times 65432 uh, three, uh, uh, sorry huh. what has the, the prompt again? okay so 1 2 just a sec because I have notifications enabled here okay <laughs> All right, so um, one, two, three, four, five, six times uh, our constant, and our constant is so six, five, four, three, two, one. Uh, um, what was it? It was minus, no, plus, it was plus plus that number so this is our constant so it gives us this this is our constant for n uh, greater than 1 which is nice so we have this constant you have this n 0 and um, and we say that, uh, sorry, our constant is was this, and we, we want to ensure that, for example, for when it is equal to that, and we want to say, let's add uh, when. Let's try the big O first, which I think is uh, more doubtful. Yeah, it is. So let's try with big O. So six five four three two one times one, and uh, we had uh, height. So. Uh, Alright, that constant, we only had a 1, so it was 2, in fact. And we want to show that this number is greater or equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 1 plus 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And, um, it clearly, clearly is not, which means we did things wrongly, somewhere, at some point, things went wrong. And this is a sign that I should go sleep, but before, we just have another look at it. Think again about why it's not correct. 
and um, the reason is Well, to be honest, to be honest, the reason is fairly obvious, right? The reason is fairly obvious. For the lower bound, this, this is obviously correct, right? Uh, and I'm sleepy, that's why I'm going, I'm being so slow about this. Uh, it's a, a simple exercise nonetheless. You see, this is C1. You can trust on this C1. Uh, this is obviously correct. It's trivial. You can trust on that. Now, for C2, I, I tried a bit with limits and, uh, and stuff. But it is not really that relevant to go through that, you know, because you only want to find that upper bound, and it doesn't matter if it is super close or not. And I, I was doing um, the limit because I wanted to see how how this function behaves. I mean, I know how this function behaves. It is not a, a sophisticated function, it's just n multiplied by a constant and added to a constant, so simple expression. And um, a linear expression actually, it is something like this. So not, not a complicated function. And, um, but I wanted to understand uh, how I could, the limit is obvious, right? This is a limit. So, I wanted to understand how that function worked, and uh, I was thinking about uh, I could how I how I could uh, approximate such function. You see, there's a way you can find that optional op optimal sweet spot, right? Uh, because you want to multiply a constant by n, so you need some function that goes like not like this. Uh, actually, let me do this properly. I want you to have a full idea of what is going on and what I was thinking about. And um, why I was complicating, because I was complicating. Because I, I wanted to find something that um, uh, isn't necessary and, uh, and doesn't have that the solution as I was looking for. Uh, it has a simple solution, but not the one I wanted. So suppose this is the function we are we are studying here, right? And this is the function you want to find. Actually, you want two functions. You want you want one like this, and you want one like this. Right? And what is this? What is going on? You see, <coughs> I should have used different colors, but I think you can, uh, you can follow it without major complications. So this point here is where 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, okay? And this is zero. This is where your function starts. And this one, this one is C1 times N. What's the big secret for, for the omega function? The omega function has to grow, uh, for example, at C1, being 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 0. It will never uh, cross, 
the upper function and it is going to always go below it um, so it's a smaller function but this one this one has to cross it it will never start above it because this one starts at 6, 5, 4, 2, 3, 2, 1 and um, it, 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 it rate uh, of, uh, grow, it, it, it's growing a growing rate the closer it can go and still cross it uh, is going to be something like uh, this right uh, but if you do this if you do this c2 times n it will take a fair amount of time until it finally crosses it and you have to determine when is this n0 uh, in which it happens the thing is you don't really need that correct um, you can just come up with a function that is going to present that uh, feature uh, now the thing is we said let n0 be 1 so uh, we expected when we oh uh, yeah I was going to say something wrong, but now that I was explaining what I was thinking about, I realized that I think I my what I was thinking makes sense. It is actually correct. Well, it isn't. Otherwise, things would have worked. What am I missing? I'm overlooking something that isn't complicated. What is it? What is it? I'm looking. Uh, there's something here. There's something here, and I'm not seeing. Five. N zero is five. Approximately. N zero is five. So this was when we computed this function. If we multiply this by 5, we get that value. If we multiply this by 5, maybe 4 works.
Oops. Maybe it for works. Yeah. But free doesn't. It does. Does too much well? So it only fails with one. Why? You said N0 equal 1. Well, to be fair, you did say so, but equal, not strictly. Equal, not strictly. Strictly, yeah. No, it is fair. It is fair. It's fair. It's fair. You need an equality. No. Yeah, yeah, and it's one. Yeah. So sorry about uh, overcomplicating this problem. As I said, I'm already sleepy. Uh, my guess with 5 was because I was thinking on the limit of the function and then I was inverting um, the expression to equal that limit that would be something like 4.3 maybe so 5 was my guess of something certain anyway, uh, but I was overthinking it now um, I don't need limits here, I only need to do a simple algebraic operation, I don't need to overcomplicate it like this. I think I'm going to leave this in the video because it's something that happens and, um, and it's actually healthy to stop a bit and recall, hey, look at the function, uh, think with some logic on what you can do and uh, then solve it. Um, but I think the, the most uh, important take-home lesson uh, here is sleep well and what is obvious will be obvious. So, yeah. Oops. And sorry, I I made what I turned I turned what was meant to be a short video in something long with no need. Anyway, so I'm going to stop now. And uh, tomorrow I go on. We were in four. The next one is five. more of the same so yeah see ya folks tomorrow we go on the show must go on tomorrow hello everyone um, let's go resume what we were doing yesterday okay and uh, sorry about another interruption this video is such a small video and yes, it has already so many interruptions so five <clears throat> Hopefully I will go smoother this time, I have already slept um, a little bit more and it's really late morning, so yeah. Um, to n minus 7 per pound 
by 3 times 17 hand squared. Alright, so this one is trivial, right? Um, you could try even do some manipulation like cutting this off because you are looking for an upper bound. And so this one is uh, subtracting, so it is not helping you finding it. And, um, <coughs> but you don't even. <coughs> sorry. You don't even have to worry about that. You can only can just say a hand zero equals one, c equals one. There's nothing to prove here. This is a given exercise. So five is that it? And um, so six. Well, <coughs> six is a, a bit more of an interesting exercise. <coughs> Um, six can actually can actually five. So what is going on with this? Um, you see, <coughs> if you want to show that you have to refer to the Bevo uh, definition, which we already know, and um, and you say, uh, hey, we have. And I remember LG is um, based to algorithm, um, has smooth face, um, but doesn't really matter the base of the, of the algorithm, we just have these, uh, these um, results with any base. LG of n, uh, smaller or equal to, to n. Uh, and so, <coughs> This is true for any positive n, and this is true for c, and we are having c here, for c equals 1. So it's the same case as we have with 5. So there is nothing to prove of special with the function. But now we have this, we have the number that six and the confidence about being true, so we can say this five that. And now they have to hey, but is it in in big theta of n? Well, it is not. And um, if it isn't, but it is in big O of n, that means it is not not in in big omega. And we have big omega here, right? So it's the same thing, but this one swapped. So um, how do we prove that? Well, <coughs> we are telling that um, that um, if it is not in big omega, we are telling that it is um, for every c in R plus. <coughs> for every n0 in z plus, uh, there exists an n greater or equal than n0 such that the LG of n is simply smaller than a constant times n. This is the definition of not staying in uh, big omega, so we are saying that the LG of n is not in big omega n. <coughs> okay, and um, how do we show that? Well, we know that if we do go in, of x going towards this positive infinity of LG of n divided by uh, x. So I'm using this to be consistent with that. And I remember um, we were trying to find an LG n uh, just at this condition. Um, this condition 
this condition was true, right? And so we are now dividing uh, in, in the hope of finding the field. And so <coughs> we do this limit, and we have the limit of <coughs> so what is in here? Um, <coughs> and we can use the lock it on rule here. And so we have uh, L G network times one over X over ten. And that's going to be trivially zero. Well, okay. well, um, with that in mind, that means uh, the definition of a limit that we have for every T in hard plus um, that exists a hem in hard plus just that for every uh, x greater than that hem we have the LG of x divided by x smaller, equally smaller um, than c Right. Just to ensure that everything is clear, uh, <coughs> what we have done was what we, we want to show that this is not in um, in um, in big uh, omega, and so we fix the logarithm and we, uh, and we add, uh, add this in equation there. Right? Then <coughs> um, we take the condition of not being vain in the omega, and we have the definition of omega, and we cannot deal with this we have the other. Yeah. Okay. So we have the definition of the omega. And we say there exists a C in F plus and M zero in this such and the in the and we have this expression based on these values. Uh, that is, it is only a function in big uh, omega, the order of magnitude, if f, the function f of n, is greater or equal to c times g of n. And uh, that's for have uh, and g of n being the function we are, in this, our case it's, it's n, and um, for every n greater or equal um, to n0, well, then, with that in mind, we can say, hey, for every C in R plus, and for every uh, N0 in Z plus, there exists a N greater than N0, such that um, LG of N is going to be slightly smaller, because we are okay, saying greater or equal, than C times N. Okay, so that's the, um, the reverse. Well, then we did the limit of uh, L G of N um, in hopes to find the, 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 the conversion of this function, and uh, and we did, we did, and we 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 arrived to zero. Well, by the definition of limit, we now know that for every C in R plus, there is going to exist. Um, an, uh, an N in R plus um, such that for every X greater than N and now remember we are talking about um, for example if we plot this function I remember that I had I actually don't know if, you, if I had that that here no I do not but uh, it is going to be something like um like this. Uh, like this. So uh, I think I this is not possible to plot things here. Well 
blood tiring. Anyway, it will be something I say. Mm, okay. okay, something like this. Yes. And so we are saying we are saying that uh, <coughs> uh, at some point it is going to and so uh, what is the oh my Saving from part of this amazing plot. Why can you just um, maybe I can find proper part. And this is more for the, the intuition. Just a second. And uh, Okay, and do you remember um, we talked about uh, the orders of magnitude, the the dominant, uh, sorry, the dominant relation? And we know that n dominates uh, ln lc of n, and, um, and so and so um, we know that because of the limit, and we are showing that we are showing that. It is equal to zero when we divide it by the other object. And the other object, remember, we started with an x here, which is n. So uh, when you divide it by n, you arrive to a zero. What does that mean? It means that the n dominated over the, the logarithm. And so by, that defini by the definition of this limit, we can say that for every t in our plus there exists an n in our plus um, and for every x for every n greater than a certain uh, value and um, for example in this image uh, they that value is like um, one um, yeah that's why expected to take a bit longer so oh wait okay it's up to two okay mm, yeah but maybe it even is so one uh, it doesn't matter that much the thing is there will be uh, a point greater than n such that this expression is going to be smaller than t triple small well Therefore, um, you can experiment with some values if you want, but I think the most important part of this uh, exercise is to understand the dominance of n over um, healthy of n. So, <coughs> therefore, if n greater than n, uh, and this is why we have changed for to an x here, so we can have this as a separate uh, relation. Then we have um, the LC of n over n, which is smaller than t, right? And just repeating what I said, right above. Nothing new here. This is smaller than t. Um, the L D of n is going to be smaller than the t. Why am I? Smaller than t times n, okay, and um, yeah. For 
a given? Does this light come here for a given? Do I have a, a, a little delay? For a given n0, if n greater than n0, uh, actually, if if with with n greater than n zero, we ensure the condition, and this is the first condition I have. Uh, this one, this is this mission of LTA of N not in the omega of N and let me see if I'm writing in a clear manner. Therefore, if n greater n greater than n, and I oh my god, my hand and n has two meanings. If n greater greater than n. Has this, it, it has this for a given n zero and When or with n greater than n zero, we ensure the condition uh, this one if. If n equal to mass of the field m n zero plus one, uh, if we observe um, observing, yeah, observing, observing. N equals the mass of that, and N greater than M of right N greater than M and N greater than M. And I'm talking about briefly greater. Um, but let me see if this was clear enough or if I messed up too much on the on the computer. Therefore, if n greater than m, we have healthy of n of m strictly smaller than t, uh, it has LV of n is strictly smaller than t times n. Yeah. For a given n zero, with n greater than n zero, we ensure that the condition uh, LV of n 
is not in omega n, observing that n is equal to a mass between the fluid n, n0 for plan, and n, and is strictly greater than n, and n is strictly greater than n0. Yeah, I guess it's clear. Um, <coughs> well, actually, let's just when selecting when selecting and zero. We ensure the condition, uh, the following condition. Yeah, I'm, I'm making this uh, slightly overly complicated because we can just write when selecting n zero. We ensure the condition, observing, uh, having, or yeah, observing having. Uh, and uh, the max between uh, a steward ham and zero was less uh, having this uh, this so satisfying uh, these two conditions when selecting and zero will show the condition LVLM is not in omega n observing this. And there you go, you can select an N0 or be given an N0, and you just have to observe this happening because that, uh, I don't know that word is just this in your response. Satisfy. Uh, it is satisfied the, that. But anyway, it's just a matter of reading, writing the the idea is this one and uh, kind of clear, I think. Uh, even though the way it is written, so for given n0, we then put it as an n0. We ensure the condition observing the n being one of these and uh, these two uh, things. So uh, observing x satisfies. Uh, All right. Uh, next exercise. Um, let me erase all of this. Oh.
Alright, so let's move on. And this was 6.7, especially 7. Now we have 8. And we want to show that um, n <coughs> oh, n to the 100 is going to be uh, smaller and um, not that when I say smaller I'm talking about uh, smaller equal and when I say strictly smaller then it's just smaller it's not like that uh, uh, the terminology I would use so it's smaller than indigo of 2 to the n alright and you see, you can actually look to the, the graph here, and you, uh, and you can see that the, um, the 2 to the n, so the, this line, I think, is uh, greater than n um, to the 100, in this case, yes, to the 2. Uh, if, you, if, you, if after a certain hand, it's not from the very beginning, but but it it happens so it's fast. and um, <coughs> and so we want to show that dominant right and it's a bit more of the same so we will do the um, limit of uh, So x goes to positive infinity, and we have uh, 2 of um, n here, and we have n from n here. Well, um, you, you hardly would could, uh, do the, well, you could actually automatically say that it is 0. Uh, because you know all of these function pH, you know what is going to happen when x goes towards infinity, and why have I written n in this case? Uh, so, x and this here. But you can also say uh, that you apply the logical rule uh, 100 times. So you would have uh, something like um, 100 factorial, right? So you are how it's moving this one, and um, and you have uh, LG or LN for some logarithm. Doesn't really matter, but you do that logarithm 100 times um, of two um, times two to the x. And, um, and well, you have constants here, and I, I, I didn't write logarithm, so uh, uh, limit again, let me just skip, skip this, that. It's important to write that here and do things properly. So, we are doing a formal demonstration, so we don't have to use formula to develop everything. that and now you can say hey this is a number that's a number so this is essentially the same as having the limit of x to the positive infinity of well let me just drag it drag it again, around again so something like this move it to the right slightly okay. so um Pretty much the same as having um, wait. 
one hundred again yeah. oh no, the already activated okay one hundred then back to over ln uh, all around times on q uh, this multiplying with um, the limit of 1 over 2 to the x well we know that 2 to the x 2 is to infinity is going to be infinity and therefore we can simplify this all, all this expression as a 0 so we have 0 we could represent all these intermediate spaces uh, 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 but um, oh, it's the way. and with this we show there is a dominant relation um, so you can do uh, exactly the same we have done in the previous exercise um, you, you, you add the, 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 the complement of uh, you, you have this uh, the definition of not vain in big O, right? Uh, you can simply pick the big O definition and say uh, the and reverse how the what we call uh, 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 how this what we call uh, operator, and um, and it, when we that you can say hey. Um, I have this limit. That limit means there is an end uh, at which everything, uh, every hand greater than that m is going to be uh, is going to leave um, the n to the 100 to be greater than c times 2 to the hand uh, for whatever c. Um, I said greater, right? I think so. Uh, so I think I, I did say so. That's the correct. Um, and with that, uh, if you you only have to ensure you have a hand greater than hand two, uh, for and it, and you know it will follow that condition. Uh, it will satisfy that condition uh, if your hand is greater than that fewer hand. Or a given n zero, you you may elect the greater of those of those two, but it has to be at least as great that n zero, that minimal n zero, has to be greater than the fewer n. We have one just to ensure, and uh, and you know it will pass it by. Um, so that's how you do the kind of exercise you have with height and with um, with uh, seven for the omega part for this because for the ego it's trivial. All right. So eight is done, and we are going now to the last exercise of this video, and in the next one we will have more fun with this. So this one is demo is shown. Uh, it's the same thing, just with ego instead of big omega. Um, I don't know why I'm using the radius when I could simply go back to the radius. Nice. <coughs> well, now we have um, a smart This This was the last that just tells us the dominant relation and the standing so we got this we want to show that it is oh it's, it's, it's second so you have to show two things here you have to show uh, 1 plus 100 and it's going to be quickly um, it will go, go to be smaller than um, c times 1 and 1 plus 100 and it's going to be greater than 
and let me call this p1 is going to be greater than p2 times one. Okay. Well, uh, for this one, <coughs> how do you have to do this? Well, uh, you can um, say that uh, this. You can go with the, the dominance relation and do the limits and things like this, but you can also do um, the same thing. We are doing at the very beginning of this video, which was to manipulate the 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 equation in kind of this. And so <coughs> let's see if we. Uh, you can say uh, we, we can do the exact same thing with this uh, for four, the exercise four. But this time we don't have all the confusion in, in that from yesterday. So let's do it properly this time. And the proper way of doing this would be something like saying, first of all, let's swap, have a better notion of what we are. So this is n. And we know that something like, uh, like what happened to... I, I have written just this sort of thing. Okay, and there but So, for n, we know that this function is going to be something like this, where this is going to be well. So, we know that the limit of this function will eventually convert to one. And um, with that in mind, we know that to show uh, p2, well, p2 is going to be 1. So we can write that down. p2 is going to be 1. And we know that this happens somewhere like 101. Right? And so we can say that n0 is going to be 101. That's the solution for the omega case. Now, we want the 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 big hole case. And remember, for uh, theta, oops, yeah. for theta, we want to do this to count for the same uh, n zero, right? So we have already said n zero is going to be uh, one hundred one. All right. Let's go back to what we are doing. Uh, so n zero is selected for now. Maybe we may have we, we may have to change it. Maybe not. Uh, but it is as necessarily to be greater than one hundred. So uh, that's okay. Now for the big O. Well, um, we know it is in pairs, so we know already that it is going it is going to exist. Uh, and we can say that. After a certain um, n, it is never going to be greater than, for example, this value. This value can be, for example, 2. And I'm talking about that. So, p1 can be 2. And that the big O case. Okay. And nine is so. Now you could you could come up with a, 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 a straight bound. You don't have to. So that's it. Uh, and this is not a bad bound, by the way. Off by one, and when I say off, it's a focus. It's not not really a so off path. Like that, but yeah, that's how. Uh, oh, I see they they, they are using page for something, but anyway. Yeah, so these are proofs I would be happy about, and um, well, I'm no professor of algorithms, so I don't know. I only think if I was solving these problems, I would um, be happy about these proofs. They look 
good to me, good enough to me, and I feel confident about them. So I think we have um, the right solutions to do that with Python. In the next video, I'm going to show some more proofs and a, bit, a, a slightly different type of exercise. And I'm going to do the proof, the, the, the complexity uh, analysis of the temporal complexity analysis of uh, insertions so of this is the web uh, that is in common uh, after this kind of problem. So, uh, At least I thought so. That's for sure. Well, I certainly thought it was in common. If it is, I will use it. If it is not, I will base myself on another source. Anyway, that's it. Um, I hope this was not too messy and it was helpful.